Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the October Sustainabite. My name is Calandra Waters Lake. I serve as the Sustainability Director here at William and Mary. We're very excited to have you. Sustainabite is William and Mary Sustainability's lunchtime information session where we feature a university or local expert in their area through the lens of sustainability. So as I've already said, I hope you've grabbed your lunch and that you are settled in. Um, before we get started, I would like to do the university's land acknowledgement. Um, I would like to recognize the indigenous peoples who are the original inhabitants of the lands our campus is on today. The Cherenhaka Nataue, Chickahominy, Eastern Chickahominy, Mattapanai, Monacan, Nansamond, Nataue, Pamunkey, Patawamak, Upper Mattapanai, and Rappahannock tribes and pay our respect to their tribal members past and present. If you're looking for that land acknowledgement, you can find it on the William & Mary American Indian Resource Center's website. We usually kick things off in Sustainabite with a little reminder of um, what sustainability is about. The official definition is here on your screen. It recognizes the interdependence of human and natural systems, looking to ecological principles as models, creating healthy, happy, and resilient communities, as well as healthy economies that recognize ecological limits and decisions that recognize cause and effect across time, scale, and place. As you can see, sustainability is really about more than surviving or continuing, it's about thriving. And we think of it as an ongoing intentional process, um, sort of like a pursuit. It's action oriented, much like maintaining your health. It's not a target that is achieved and set aside, but is an ongoing effort. We also like to refer to the sustainable development goals. Um, if you have not been to their website before, it's very um, user friendly. These tiles flip over and tell you all about the goals and ways that um, we are working towards sustainability at a global level. Before we get to our topic today, I'd like to just provide a couple um, additional announcements on sustainability. So green fee proposals are due October 26th. These are open to all faculty, students and staff. We also have um, our final Sustainabite of this semester taking place on November 11th, and we'll be welcoming Reverend Max Blaylock to talk about climate change, what's religion got to do with it. So hopefully we will see you at that one as well. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speakers today. Eden Harris, who is Associate Director of Marketing, Administration, and Licensing and Auxiliary Services and Dave Zoll, sourcing analyst for the Office of Procurement. Um, you should see them on your, your screens right now. Um, before I hand things over to Eden and Dave, I'm actually gonna provide a little bit of information about the executive order and single-use plastics that we'll be talking about today. Um, the executive order 77 is titled, Leading by Example to Reduce Plastic Pollution and Solid Waste. This order is from the governor and it focuses mainly on single use plastics and um, polystyrene and is aimed to reduce plastic pollution that ends up in landfills or in the environment. It applies to all state agencies, um, such as higher education. It also includes all thir third parties, uh, such as those entities housed on campus, um, the service that is provided to us from those off campus and those off campus that we are responsible for. For consistency um, across the university and for community expectations, this will also apply to all funding sources. Auxiliary services, procurement and sustainability have been co-leading the very collaborative response to Executive Order 77, which is built upon the waste diversion successes and goals the university already had set. So we dig into this a little bit so that you know exactly what we're, we're talking about. The main focus of the executive order is on single use plastics and styrofoam. Um, William & Mary uses very little styrofoam. So our main emphasis is the single use plastics. 
The Department of Environmental Quality is defining single use plastics as those that are used once and immediately discarded. So for example, a 12 ounce water bottle would be expected to be finished in one sitting, whereas a one liter or larger bottle would be considered multi-use, not single use. Uh, these items are also ones mainly used by the public. So those single use plastics that are needed for medical purposes are exempt, um, as are all laboratory and research items, um, whether your lab looks like this, or maybe your lab looks like this. Um, any lab that would like to explore reducing their single use plastics is highly encouraged to do so. Items used in the normal business of labs, such as office supplies for office purposes, do still fall underneath the order. So the order has three areas, but basically they combine to result in a plan to phase out publicly used single use plastics over the next four years. Um, a plan that really builds upon Blue and Mary's previous progress and our future goals. So for example, pre-COVID, the dining halls were already single use plastic free and they're headed back in that direction now. We also have the second best composting program in the nation for a school of our size, giving us a leg up on this executive order from the start. Um, if you wanna know more about our composting program, the September Sustainabite was on composting. So that video is already available on the Sustainabite website. So the way that we're approaching the executive order and diversion from the landfill in general is uh, we're prioritizing strategies that first reduce, then reuse, then compost and recycle. You might also be wondering why in some cases, like water bottles, does it matter that we switch away from plastic to aluminum um, because they're both being recycled, right? Well, although both materials have their environmental impacts, they have very different recycling stats. Um, aluminum is extremely recyclable and is a valued commodity among recycling providers. Plastic has a limited recycling life and far from valued, many types of plastics are not accepted by recycling companies. Plastics are also considered a serious threat to the environment, particularly marine ecosystems. Recycling of any material is far from perfect, which is why a reusable bottle with access to a filling station is an even better alternative when possible. These are some of the items we've begun addressing for the first year of the plan. Remember that the point of the executive order is to reduce waste. So please do not throw away unused items. Um, although purchasing of certain items has stopped or is being phased out, we have until June of next year to use up remaining stocks. At that point, any remaining stocks can be donated through an official university process. Um, foodware and shopping bags, small storage bags, purchasing of these um, should no longer be single use plastics or polystyrene in the case of food. If you switch to a compostable, the expectation is that the item is making it to a compost bin. Locations for drop-off um, compost bins can be found on the single-use plastics website, which we can share in the chat in a minute. Uh, and just a reminder again that our sust September Sustainabite was on composting. So if you're not sure what goes into a compost bin on campus, um, all of that information was very well laid out by our dining services folks um, in September. Um, William Mary Catering has already begun switching away from single-use plastics. All other catering and America to go orders must comply with the order, but they have until the end of next year, so 2022. The, this will be a phased approach for the local restaurants, so please feel free to request that no single-use plastics be provided to help show support and appreciation for their efforts as they move into that. Um, the last one listed on this um, slide is our event supplies. So these are things like balloons, glitter or confetti, plastic ribbon, single use plastic tablecloths and single use plastic promotional items. Um, purchasing all, the, all that should shift to alternatives by the end of the year. 
And then I have three more that I'd like to go over. Um, phase out of water bottles has begun. The expectation is that if alternatives are available, they should be used. You're gonna be hearing more on water bottles in a moment. Um, coffee pods, plastic envelopes, and bubble wrap should begin transitioning to alternatives where possible, but these will be more fully addressed in coming years. Um, we'll also have more to share on things like thin liners in the future. So I know I've ran through a lot of information at one time. Um, feel free to drop questions in the chat, but I will also share the link to the single use plastic website which will have um, more information on these individual items that I've just gone over, um, alternatives and links to um, other departments across campus, including links to some of the information you, you are going to hear about today from Eden and Dave. So I am going to hand things over to Eden to talk a little bit more about water bottles. Thank you, Calandra, and it's so great to see so many people here uh, today. Every time we have this conversation, um, it allows us to get that message out even further. Um, so as Calandra said, I am here to talk about hydration and swag uh, to what I think are fun topics. Um, but Calandra, if you wouldn't mind switching the slide, and there we go. Um, so the first piece is how to stay sustainably hydrated on campus. Um, there, what the first thing or the, the, the top level recommendation we can make is to utilize the bottle fillers at water fountains um, for de like internal department or internal personal use. Um, start thinking about or how can you bring your reusable water bottle from home or keep one in your office. Um, I know I have mine here that comes back and forth with me every day. And, you know, there's so many different options out now. So you know, as you're out and about um, or looking around online, you know, consider consider purchasing a water bottle um, to bring to campus with you or encourage your colleagues um, or office mates as you're returning back to campus to bring a water bottle. So many of our water fountains now have the bottle fillers available. If you are going to be purchasing um, a more single use bottle, whether it's at retail vending or in bulk for events or departmental use, um, we have worked closely with our bottling partner Pepsi um, to provide Alumatech bottles on campus. So if you at all have moved through the retail environment on campus this semester, these Alumatech bottles are available both in retail and vending. Um, as well as for bulk purchases. And I will get into that on the next slide, um, but we have worked to develop a, a plan for those. The nice thing about the Illumitech option is they are resealable. So uh, some areas you may see water in cans or water in cardboard. The Illumitech product is a, is a screw top bottle um, that is available in this market. They, um, the next is office water coolers, um, so more of a, a bulk option, and Dave is going to get into that a little bit more in his presentation in how um, there are some funding restrictions and supply uh, restrictions in getting water coolers established in your office, um, but it is doable on campus, and we have two partners that can provide that service. We've also been working behind the scenes to just bring together um, a more sustainable hydration across campus. Again, we worked with William and Mary Dining and Pepsi to bring in SodaStream Professional and both Commons and Sadler available for student use uh, this semester. We were one of the first institutions in the country to install this technology um, where students or users can customize the experience through QR codes and through digital applications uh, for flavor, for carbonation, for temperature. It's a pretty amazing tool um, that takes what you may have SodaStream at home in your home kitchens and brings it into a more professional environment. So a number of different options, you know, I think the biggest thing is we recognize that some of these um, shifts will are going to be big shifts in for culture and behavior, um, but we are pretty confident and comfortable that collectively um, we can make some of these very intentional changes and still ultimately get what we need, which is to be hydrated. Um, on the promotional product side, so within auxiliary services, I wear a couple of different hats. Um, so hydration and water is kind of my contract administration, working with Pepsi and dining and procurement. 
on those changes, but I also serve as the director of licensing, trademark licensing at William & Mary, working closely with promotional product vendors and departments to ensure um, that our brand is used correctly out in, in the wild. Um, and so for promotional products and moving away from kind of single use products, I think the biggest takeaway or the biggest message I can provide is to really think about how what you're going to order is going to be used and really start trying to make some smart buying decisions. Um, I think we all have probably have a box in our desk somewhere of pens that we have collected along the way or notepads. Um, and, and are there other ways to think about uh, to get your brand out there? Working with our promotional vendors um, to look for recycled fabrics. If you want to do a, a bag or a t-shirt um, or, or some sort of apparel or fabric-based item, you know, looking for those re recycled fabrics. Are there natural materials that you can use? Um, one of the cooler promotional products I picked up recently is a multicolored pencil um, that, that is a really different and unique way. And I find myself gravitating towards it and it's all made out of recycled materials. Looking for give back items. Are there products that support sustainable causes um, that, you know, or, or can grow or adapt or change in, in what you're doing? Um, or reusable products, again, as we're talking about water um, and bottles, straws, bags, and looking for products that are sustainably made. Um, as Calandra mentioned earlier on, you know, sustainability can is also um, can kind of fall into the category as looking at workers' rights and making sure that products are made in a sustainable way, um, both for the, the individuals that are making them and then the, the factories where they are produced um, and that they are they are quote unquote good factories. Um, you know, I always use the analogy if you're looking at a $5 t-shirt. There's a reason that that t-shirt is five dollars um, and to consider if that is a product that uh, you would be proud to wear and if you feel like that that is made in, in a in a sustainable way so those are just some of the important things to think about um, as you are develop or as you're creating or searching for promotional products and our vendors are fantastic um, and well versed in, in identifying what some of those opportunities may be you can also always email me at licensing at wm.edu. Um, and before you make any promotional product purchase, please make sure you're checking to make sure that the, our vendors are licensed, which is a required part of the process. Um, and our vendors are listed under wm.edu slash licensing. Um, but again, I'm always happy to, to help guide that. Next slide, please, Calandra. So a little bit more um, on how to order water that we have worked to put into place as we make this transition. So on the left is an example of the new uh, Illumitech Aquafina can, so very fancy. Um, if you are looking to order less than 15 cases, starting of, uh, November 1st, you'll be able to create an order through William & Mary, uh, through ATG or America to Go with William & Mary Catering. Once your order is processed, you'll actually be able to go to the Student Exchange and Sadler Center, which has extended hours to pick up those orders yourself. If you're ordering more than 15 cases, you are able to actually order these directly from Pepsi through BuyWM. Um, the BuyWM team has launched a water uh, form that once completed will route directly to Pepsi from fulfillment. They uh, orders are required to be placed within our one week in advance um, because we only we have trucks come to campus two days a week um, and we want to make sure that you have your order on those trucks. Um, but the nice thing is if you are ordering bulk or ordering more than 15 cases, they um, you'll be able to have them delivered directly to your department so you don't have to actually go to Sadler um, and pick those up. So again, um, starting November 1st, less than 15 cases can go through America to go and more than 15 cases can come straight from Pepsi. So that is uh, from me. I'm gonna turn it over to Dave for more on how to identify single use plastic alternatives through our procurement processes. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about these four sources, um, what we've done with the supply room company, uh, water overall, but also how it interacts with by WM, what we've done in Amazon, and then also America to go. So next slide, please. 
So in TSRC, we got a list of products that we purchased within the last um, three, four years or so, and started looking at products on that cessation list or the, the prohibited items list. And we started to kind of remove those items from the catalog. Um, along with that, we have to think about what alternatives are out there. And we can't just say, well, you can't buy all this stuff anymore without finding different stuff for you to buy, right? Uh, so on the TSRC homepage, you'll see a green products tile, and you can click on that tile and there'll be a list of products in there. And those are mostly the cessation items at this point. So they'd be forks, knives, spoons, cups, um, plates, things like that. Uh, so we've removed products that were um, single use, uh, non-recyclable, and we've replaced those products in that list with compostable items or, or things of that, that nature. And the price point is very similar. Um, you can find uh, maybe a 10 to 50 count box for you know five bucks or whatever uh, it is where it might be a little bit more expensive than what you've seen in the past, but you know, as an institution, you know, this is where we're, we're moving. It's kind of what we've been told that we have to do by the Commonwealth. So um, what I've tried to do is get some products out there um, that are comparable, comparable in price. Uh, TSRC is also offering a water cooler service. So I saw a message come up in the chat before about Diamond Springs. Um, on a future slide, I'll, I'll talk to that. But um, TSRC is also going to be uh, an available option for water cooler service. So next slide, please. Great. Uh, so there's a new web page out on the procurement website. This is under the purchasing at wm.edu or purchasing at wm um, web page. We've got a list of categories there. Um, so if you click on water, it will bring you out to this page and it'll talk to bottled water and water coolers. Uh, it'll give you information about the executive order. It'll link out to that so you know exactly you know, what we can and can't do. It talks to the process for purchasing water through by WM uh, with Pepsi. And then it also gets into a couple of service providers. So as I mentioned, TSRC did roll out that water cooler program for us. Um, they're doing towers that are, I believe, a $4 rental fee per month, and then maybe it's $5, somewhere between $4 and $5. And then the five-gallon jug to go along with that is right around $4. Uh, they also offer a plumbed option, which they call point of use. Um, that you would need to work a little bit with facilities management to make sure that um, the site is prepped first, and then there would be a direct water line in so that you wouldn't need those five gallon jugs with that unit. And the price on those is a little bit more. I believe those are $29.99 a month for the rental fee. Um, with the ones with the five gallon jugs, if you order over a certain amount of jugs per month, they waive the, the rental fee. So um, there are a lot of options there. I would suggest getting out to that website and kind of checking it out. Um, this site also talks to the use of funds. So for water being purchased for guests and visitors, local funds must be used. That's part of our local funds policy. That is not a change that's come out with this executive order. That is something that has been in place. Um, so please just go ahead and, and look at that you know, at your own convenience. Um, I reference America to go a little bit on this page as well, but just to say that we're working with those vendors right now, as, as Calandro stated, um, they've got a little bit of an extension or an extended time period to comply with the order, uh, but we are working with them to get them on track. Next slide, please. In Amazon, we've kind of found that this is a catch-all for people. So sometimes people like to go out to Amazon and, and order a variety of products and services or products. Um, it's hard to tell what the sustainable footprint is for those items. Um, so what we've done is globally turned on preferences for sustainable products. And there's a list of about 20 or so uh, sustainability certifications that we've turned on. So as you're searching in Amazon, you'll now see items preferred that have these certifications. So um, we don't have the ability to, in Amazon to curate or to remove products like we do with TSRC. Uh, but what we can do is provide you some alternatives. And then it is really on you to, to know what those products are. 
that you can and cannot purchase. So look for these um, different certifications as you're out there. I'm working with a sustainability ambassador right now, Grace Phillips. Uh, she's working on an independent study to identify and catalog some of these products. So she's done a great job for each product category. She's probably listed, you know, five or 10 different items. So hopefully we'll have that online shortly. So if you know you need to buy forks, you can look at that catalog and say, here are some forks and here's the link and I can go out and buy them. So we'll have those online as well. Next slide, please. And my final talking point is America to go. Uh, so we're working with those vendors, as we said, to phase out single use plastics. If you go online right now, there may be some vendors that still have those, those products out there. Um, but we are working with them to remove items from their menus. So in the coming months, you should see like serviceware options change. Uh, also, uh, beverage options change. And we'll have a more complete rollout of sustainability with them. As you know, we've already rolled out a couple of different sustainability initiatives. We've got the sustainability dashboard, uh, which is on the right hand side of, of that picture there. Uh, and that kind of tracks your sustainability spend based on how vendors are tagged. So on the left hand side, you can see that some vendors have like green certified or they're low or zero waste or you know have other uh, sustainability uh, initiatives that they're working on All right so that's what I've got for for my part Calandra if you want to take it back thanks Dave and Eden um, I'm going to leave the slides up for now in case uh, you'd like me to tab back to anything, but I'll take them down in a minute if that doesn't appear to be the case. We do have uh, a couple questions from the chat that I'd like to, to pitch towards you all. Um, I think the first one has been answered. Dave, uh, will we be able to continue using Diamond Springs um, water? Anything you, else you wanted to add on that? Uh, no, on the, well, yes, I, I said no, but then I want to add. Um, on the water webpage, we've got a link out to Diamond Springs. So if you're currently utilizing that vendor, you can continue using them. If you're looking for different options through them, um, a link is out there on the water website as well. TSRC has got some good products as well. If you are looking for somebody, I suggest that you do a quick price comparison on the two. Great, thank you. Um, Eden, we've got a couple questions about water bottles. Uh, how much for one case, if you know? I, I do know the answer to that. Um, the cases come in quantities of 24, so 24 bottles per case. Currently, uh, for less than 15 cases, the price is $30 a case. And for anything over 15, um, it's about $25 a case. I recognize that this is a significant increase um, over what you are likely used to paying at the grocery store or through TSRC or, or any of the other vendors. Um, and these are just changes. Please know these are changes that have to be made to comply with the executive order. Um, we've worked really hard behind the scenes to try and identify alternative um, opportunities for hydration. So that's where I kind of alluded earlier, like we recognize um, that this is going to be a pretty intentional, big intentional shift um, for your areas to make if you are used to having water bottles. Um, but yes, less than 15 cases is about $30 um, and anything over 15 is $25 a case. Thank you. And this one uh, applies to VIMS. Can VIMS order less than 15 cases? Yeah, Carol, I saw your question. I'm going to need to look into that and um, I will follow up with you offline. And uh, do you know the delivery charge for cases? Um, if it is over 15 cases, uh, there is no delivery charge as part of that. All right, I think the next one's also for you, Eden. Um, <laughs> Could you address getting sample swag items uh, from licensed vendors? It helps to get your hands on a sample product to see if it looks as good as it does on the vendor's website. 
before a large scale person. Sure, absolutely. I uh, think sample products uh, is incredibly important. Um, as somebody who used to order a lot of promotional products, those samples are crucial. Um, continue to work with the vendors directly on that. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll have blanks in their office or um, on, you know, imprints from other orders that they have fulfilled. So just continue to work with them on that. I will also highlight, it doesn't necessarily apply to this presentation specifically, but if you are ordering anything in the next couple of months or you know that, please, please, please keep in mind the significant supply chain issues that are happening right now. Um, the promotional product world has been really impacted by that. So please plan ahead, especially as you're looking for items that are gonna fall into um, the more sustainable category that may have a higher demand and lower volume. Just keep those supply chain issues in order um, and try not to order two weeks in advance and hope that it arrives on time. <laughs> I'll just I'll just put that plug in there um, as well. And uh, same goes for the samples. Thank you. Yeah, I'll tag off of that and just say like supply chain is just something that we're going to have to consider for for all of this. So patience is appreciated. As, um, as many across the Commonwealth are implementing this order and we're all being impacted by supply chain and, and in some instances all asking for a lot of the same things um, in order to comply with the order. I see there's one more about coffee pods. Everyone needs to have their coffee. Um, the coffee pods along with the bubble wrap and the plastic envelopes, those are all things that we will be addressing more fully in the years to come, but we would like to start reducing um, the purchases of those in this next coming year. So it is not a, a dead stop on the coffee pods, but if you would like to start looking at alternatives, they can be things that are recyclable, reusable, or maybe making coffee in a slightly different way. Um, we would like to start shifting away from that in the coming year. Um, and then after that, they again will be more more fully addressed. Can I jump in on those coffee yes. pods? Absolutely. So that's one thing that I found was really interesting with the work that Grace is doing. Um, she found coffee pods that were compostable. She also found the you know reusable, refillable pod. And me, from an analyst perspective, I was kind of thinking about what's the price? What's the price difference, right? Uh, so when you buy one of those coffee pods, you know you're paying. 25 cents to almost a dollar a cup, depending on, you know, what you're purchasing. If you're using a refillable pod, you know, it could be closer to a penny, like less than a cent per, per cup. Um, so those refillable pods are, you know, there's a cost savings there as well as um, a sustainability angle to it as well. All right, good to know. Um, that is it for the questions that I see in the chat. Uh, before we wrap things up, I just wanted to remind everyone um, that there is additional information on the single use plastics um, website. And I said I was going to drop that into the chat and I have not done it yet. So I'll make sure to do that. Um, are there any other additional questions um, from our audience that is enjoying their lunch right now? I have a question. Yes, Babs. Uh, so who do I work with, Eden or Dave Zoll, if I want to talk to you about um, new employee orientation or events like that that are, I don't want to use up the time of everybody else, but I'm not sure where to start with some of our unique needs or maybe not so new unique, but. Babs, um, would you be willing to maybe send Dave and I collectively an email, even just as a starting point and we can divide and conquer and, and follow up? Um, That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. I could do I also should have said that um, on the single use plastics website, which um, let me just share my screen for a second here and you guys can see, um, there is, there's additional information about each of the items that I kind of breezed over very quickly early on. Um, there is also a form down here at the bottom if you have additional questions. There were a couple questions in the chat that um, I didn't have all the answers for and that 
probably won't be the last case because there's some of this is just going to be pretty specific. So feel free to um, to fill out that form if you have additional um, questions. Uh, Jennifer, did you have your hand up? I did. Um, I currently use Diamond Springs to rent Keurig systems um, that we use those pods. Um, will Diamond Springs um, have to be forced with their hand about the recyclable pods, coffee pods, or um, how will that work? Dave, do you know? Or is this a Sorry, that back? one was for me. I mean, I would think that they would act just like any ATG vendor or any third party vendor where they would be required to comply, but their compliance would be extended through. I think it's December of 2022. So we would need to work a little bit more closely with them on that. Great, Great thanks. Yeah, so again, a, a reminder that the coffee pods are not something that we are trying to reduce by 100%. Um, and so, but the more people that can go ahead and start making those shifts, um, the better. Um, Pamela? Hi, um, I was wondering, we do get the uh, large water bottle from uh, Diamond Springs. If we wanted to supply uh, glass drinking glasses in our office for our guests uh, so that we could refill those glasses, is there, are there any requirements as far as washing the glasses? Like how do, do we have to make sure they're sterilized? Or I mean, we do have hot water in our kitchen, but I'm not sure it's up to par for sterilization. That might be a good one for environmental health and safety. I can bring that back to Teresa Bell back and ask her for guidance there. All right, thank you. I had a similar question about that because I keep thinking if we have to supply individual things for our, our guests and our um, applicants and all that kind of stuff, it's like, how are we gonna wash all these things? So I can jump in with uh, some, some stuff on that. So. I mean, what we're looking to reduce, I think, are those single-use plastic items. It doesn't mean that you're you're required to get glasses or, um, you know, whatever that you have to wash. There can be reusable items, um, or single-use items. Help me out here, Calandra, that are made from like a different product type. I need the expert here, but I feel like everyone's <laughs> going to like the extreme on. Um, on, Dave, well, now we have to wash all these utensils when that's not really the case. Dave's correct. Um, so, so there are multiple alternatives. Um, reusables can make a whole lot of sense for some situations, and and we highly encourage that. Maybe it's an office. Um, I think checking in with environmental health and safety from with on Dave's side is a good idea because I don't want to speak out of turn, but I know that there are already offices that have reusables. Um, some places already have dishwashers and things like that. Um, so reusables is a great option, but we're not saying that the only alternative is a reusable. Um, alternatives can also be compostables. Um, and we do have composting um, across the campus. There is a map that's linked on this um, single use plastics page that, um, that shows you where the different community composting locations are. Um, and William & Mary Catering is switching to reusables and compostables, things like that. Um, and, and so those are the two, the two main options when it comes to foodware, um, remembering that if, if you end up with something that you think is recyclable, if food is on it, um, it's not, you shouldn't be putting that in the recycling because food is a contaminant. So we're aiming for things that are reusable and compostable. Um, there are also creative ways of looking at things, um, particularly for student organizations. A lot of them ask uh, that the students bring their own you know, cup and they'll bring their own things to, um, to their events. So some of it is just sort of being able to take a step back and evaluate what fits your scenario the best. Um, because you know, habit is easy to, to sink into and there might be a really great alternative for you out there. And we are happy to help as well. All right. Um, can we use state funds to install a dishwasher in our faculty lounge? 
I do not know the exact answer to that. And I don't know if Eden or Dave does. And if they don't, then we will put that, write that down and circle back. I do not either. We need to get to financial operations and ask them for guidance on that. Okay. Let's see, we've got one more, uh, should we start, but should we start obtaining new containers for composting items and then have facilities pick it up and distribute it as needed? Um, so right now, when it comes to composting, we have, we have a very well-established composting program on the campus. It's been in place since about 2010. We're really one of the first institutions to have it um, implemented behind the scenes in that way. Um, and so it's built into our dining halls and all the pre-consumer food, post-consumer food, all these things have been composted for a long time. A third party comes to the campus, picks it up and takes it to a place where it's industrially composted. Um, we've got about nine plus, they're continuing to expand community drop-off locations. Um, some of them are near things like the food truck and where a lot of to-go uh, takeout is taking place. And then there are some more scattered across the campus. And uh, at the moment, we are exploring what the composting program might look like in the future due to the fact that we're expecting more composting to be taking place. There is not a current setup for facilities to come pick up composting um, from your location. Um, the only thing close to that at the moment is William Mary Catering has had um, composting options available through their catering options. So um, I would say, you know, do the best you can. If you're using compostables, they should be making it to a compost bin because compostables going to a landfill don't actually do a whole lot of good um, where they get stuck in that anaerobic environment and still release greenhouse gas emissions that are really bad. Um, we want them go to, going to a composting facility. Um, so getting them to those compost bins, you can try reaching out to us or dining services um, for some specific help this semester, but we're hoping to have some more answers on composting more widely across the campus um, in the spring. The water fountain locations I see are, are the water fountain locations posted. Um, there are bottle filling stations across the campus. So almost every building on the campus has a bottle filling station in it. And some of them have um, multiple. We do have a map of those locations um, that is currently not linked on the website, but we can certainly do that. It was used during orientation. Um, and so that can help you more efficiently find um, a bottle filling station. I see another one on compost locations at VIMS. Um, currently at VIMS, there is composting for um, food, almost like home composting. Um, so it's not industrial. And, um, and so the garden at VIMS does accept food scraps for compost. Something at more of an industrial level, I would suggest reaching out to Mark Brabham at VIMS um, and facilities management to see if there's um, something special for your event that could be put in place. And I don't know if I missed any additional questions earlier on, but hopefully that's most of them. We're gonna be saving the chat. We'll go back through and, um, and circle back definitely to the ones that we didn't have um, all the answers for today. And then this website on single use plastics um, will continue to be updated. This will be a live, a live website, live hub. Um, so it has general information, but again, it links out to a lot of the other departments, auxiliary services, procurement. Um, it has a frequently asked questions section, but it also links to the executive order and their frequently asked questions. So you can see um, what others have been asking across the Commonwealth. Again, um, this executive order is certainly not the first time that we've been talking about single use plastics and we've been making lots of headway on this in the past, but it's great to have this um, push us along and, um, but there are some specific details to this executive order and so going to their website and seeing their frequently asked questions and their answers um, is also really useful. So feel free to, to dig into that as well. And the Department of Environmental Quality has had multiple webinars that are recorded and available um, for people to view. 
speaking of which, just a reminder that this one's recorded. And so we will be posting this one on the Sustainabite um, website. But it will certainly not be the last time that you will hear from us. Um, and additional communication will just continue to, to be moving out across the campus. All right. I think that's it for us today. We really appreciate both Eden and Dave coming and presenting um, with us and sharing all of this great information. Also very appreciative for everybody that was able to attend our Sustainabite today. Um, we will be sending out a follow-up email to anyone that has registered with some of the relevant links that we talked about. Um, and I hope that we will be seeing you in November for that Sustainabite as well. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.